Today's video is sponsored by OneFootball. Now guys, this is undoubtedly the best football app on the market right now, and of course lets you do everything that you'd expect, such as browse through the latest football videos and news stories from football all around the world, but it also enables you to do so much more. For example, you can interact with score predictions for any game and see what other fans think. You can customize which teams and competitions you're following across the world, so the app only gives you notifications you're interested in. In the transfers tab, you can browse all the latest latest gossip and see the strength rating of each transfer rumour. And if you're a proper football nerd like me, you can look through your entire team squad, detailed stats on each player and even follow players so that you can follow any major news stories on their career. And there's plenty more I haven't mentioned and the best part is that the app is completely free so make sure you go to the top of the description and get downloading ladies and gentlemen if you haven't already. You'd be silly not to. What's up ladies and gents, welcome back to another episode of the Charlton Athletic Career Mode. We are currently on the 24th of November 2019. We are in the championship and as you can see here, we are in third place after 18 games played, only one point behind the automatic promotion spot of second place and that is where currently uh, Stoke City are occupying it. So we are chasing Stoke City right now. This episode we are going to be playing one game and simming two as always. Those games are going to be against Preston North End away, followed by Hull City at home and Sunderland away as well. I haven't worked out exactly which one we're going to play, but we will get into that very, very shortly. In the meantime, we have a couple of office notifications. One is a bit of positive news, which tells us that Tariq Fosu is clear to return to training from his injury, which is great. We don't have a lot of time to spend with Tariq Fosu before he moves away to Galatasaray, so that's good. We've also got a completed suspension, that is Jason Pierce, who comes back uh, and is available for selection again. So, let's stick down these days. I will pause and... Um, you know, talk about any office notifications that come through between now and our next game. We have one more game, and then of course we are going to have to announce who the player of the month is uh, for November. So, there's one more chance for everybody to impress me. I probably am going to simulate this. I've actually got a transfer offer that comes in here for Jason Pierce from Al Nasser. I was asking for a million for him before. I'll see what they say to a million. So that fell through. They went up to 800 grand. I considered it, but it's just not worth getting a new body in. And I think a lot of you lot like Jason Pierce. I certainly really like Jason Pierce. He's actually been quite good for us um, this season as well. So we're going to keep him. And now let's get into this game, hopefully against Preston, unless anything else comes up. So Preston, North End, the opponents, let's see where they are in the table. Looks like they're pretty, oh, maybe I missed them. Oh, they're actually doing all right. They're in 12th place. I missed them there in that initial check, but they are in 12th place, bang in mid table. How many points are they away from Cholton? About eight points away or exactly eight points away from us. Um, oh, this is a dangerous one, but I think we can get away with the sim. Fosu does make the bench today. Lyle Taylor, after his sort of heroics and his substitute uh, appearance in the last episode, makes the bench again. Let's see if he will come on and change anything um, in this game at all. If it needs changing, that is nil-nil. 25 minutes-ish played. Foyt has been in the book. Barkhoisen actually gets a goal for Preston. Uh, Grant equalizes for us. He gets another goal. Another brace, sorry. Two minutes it took him to score two goals there. And we are all of a sudden in the lead right now. 20 minutes, 15 minutes actually left of the game. And currently we are taking all three points here at Preston. Please don't get a goal. They don't. And we managed to secure three points again on the road in the championship at a reasonably placed team in the league. Carl and Grant again. Uh, this is going to be a really easy player of the month, isn't it? With a brace there in the 44th and 46th minute, he stuck away a couple of goals for us, and that is enough to earn us two points. Uh, sorry, three points. Think about how many goals he scored. Uh, three points at Preston. That takes us up. Look at this into the automatic promotion spot. Still 10 points of first placed Wolves, and there is a pack behind us chasing all the way from pretty much the whole playoff occupied zone. Uh, even down to like Huddersfield and Sunderland, they're not too far off. So we've got Brentford and Stoke two points behind us. They are, are, are our most immediate um, sort of rivals for this second place uh, position in the league. But we are here, as you can see, on the 1st of December. So January just around the corner. The January transfer window will open probably in the next episode, in fact. Uh, maybe the one after that. But either way, it's time to announce... The player of the month, and as I just said, just discussed, it will be, of course, the guy who has been on blistering goal-scoring form for us this uh, this month, and that is Carlin Grant. Eight goals in the championship now, 7.3 as his average overall, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, five or six of those goals 
have come in the month of November. It might be four or five, but either way, a large amount of goals this month. And he has been the difference, really, in two or three of the games and has secured us the win. So brilliant stuff from Carlin, and he gets the player of the month for November. So these two Paraguayan players that we signed looking very promising. Vieba, turns out, is a centre forward, which is a nice versatile player that you can play up front on the wings, even in attacking midfield. He's 17 years old, coming in at a potential of 80 to 94, which is really nice. And then an overall currently of 52. Decent from him. Eugenio Arnaiz is 16 years old at 51 overall at the moment and his potential is 76 to 94. So we definitely have to keep our eyes on both of these guys because they are looking very, very dangerous indeed. So the game we're going to play today is going to be this home fixture against Hull City. Tariq Fosu is still carrying a little bit of a knock, so will not start today. However, oh, I wonder if I want to go for a different kit here for Hull. They've got three kits to choose from. We might put them in their black kit, actually. Yeah, that's nice. I like the look of that one. So here we go. We've got this lineup right here. We'll go over that in a second once again uh, as the match introduces. But Hull City, quite a decent opponent. Again, forgot to check where they are in the league, but I would imagine they're around about mid-table. Uh, I don't know if it's going to tell us where they are, but I'm feeling confident we've had some really good results lately, playing and simulating as well. So um, yeah, this squad full of confidence, ever on the rise because we've got a very young squad uh, whose potential is just huge and looking forward to this let's go so i stand corrected whole city actually bottom rock bottom of the table millwall in 23rd place on equal points with them but mate i feel like this was a little bit of a waste of a played fixture now because we probably would have got the better of them in the sim and then now the next game i'm probably going to sim which is against sunderland so Maybe I've made a little bit of a mistake there. Hopefully we can get a result here, first and foremost, and then against Sunderland as well. There is the look at our bench and our team. So, um, actually, Jason Pierce has gone down to a 69 as the month turned. And uh, Naby Sarr is a 69 as well. So, they are now the same rating. Naby Sarr makes the bench today with Ropinos and Foyt in the central defensive positions. Deek still and Earl. Forster, Kaski, Lanes and Arebo midfield. Diaz uh, with Grant and... Who is the other one in on right wing? Oh, Stengs, of course. Stengs, who's been really good for us actually lately on right wing. I had to rush while saying it there. But here comes the whole city lineup. Marshall in goal. Manalev McDonald Devai, I think that is. And Kingsley make up the back four. I always assume that these teams play a back four, but we will see in a moment. Uh, they are Husbauer Hus and Irvine in midfield. Milinkovic Bowen on the wings. Torau and Dicko are up front. Well, Torau just behind Dicko, but they are. A pretty weak side apparently in the championship this season so hopefully Charlton can get the better of him here here comes Milinkovic he's put a decent ball in there can we get it away we do the boa comes and punches here we go look at all this space for Diego Lanes that is not who you want running at you in the EFL championship and even in league one he was tearing things up sorry if you just had a little baby scream there here comes Diaz little dummy little finesse shot and forces the save from Marshall the keeper Stengs knocks it with his head into Quan Foyt he looks over to the wing and finds Diaz. Grant now with the ball. Well-timed pass. And Lannis is going to turn. He's going to find a shot with his left foot. But it dribbles wide. And already I can tell that we're going to have a lot of chances to score here against Hull City. Okay, here's Diego Lannis. Here comes Diaz on the left-hand side for Cholton. Lots of bodies trying to get in the box there. We're going to whip a cross in. And we might have got a penalty here. We have got a penalty. It was a big commitment from the defender. He gets a yellow card. Who is it? It's Angus McDonald. That if he's not Scottish, I will give everybody who watches this video a million pounds. But there is the foul. Yeah, definitely took him. And Brahim Diaz goes down in the box. And we get a penalty. And this is going to be taken by... I think this is Forster Kasky taking it. Um, I think we're going to shuffle over here. And we're going to take a few steps back as well. The suspense is probably killing you all, isn't it? Here we go. Let's fire this in. Who knows where we're going? Not even I know where I'm going. Oh, it's a great save from the keeper. Low and hard by Forster Kasky. But the save from Marshall was was matched the quality of the penalty, really. Nothing wrong Jake Forster Kasky did there, but a great save. Lanez does the little dummy. He's going to look for Grant. Oh, he's actually found Deke still here. Deke still. Lots of space for Colin Grant. Grant, how have you missed that, mate? Left foot granted. Granted. But still, you should be putting that in the back of the onion bag, son. Look at that. Skies it. High, not wide, but certainly very, very high. Unnecessarily high from that sort of position. Poor from Grant there. De Boer's going to play. Oh, that's a bit of a dodgy, dodgy goalkeeper throw there. And Bowen's going to try and whip this in now. 
Doesn't get it past Diaz. Does get it. Oh, Forster Kasky there. Defensively, Forster Kasky has been great, but he just didn't put that penalty away, which is a vital, vital thing for us so far. And I feel like Hull are gradually picking up confidence in this game, but here comes Calvin Stengs making the run. Doesn't get on the end of it. And Dicko's on the end of this one again. They've got a few players making runs in the box. Of Ropanos does well. And here we go. Maybe one more chance here. It's Stengs. Stengs to Lanes. Lanes turns and gives the ball away again. Come on, boys. And Dicko now. Dicko on the ball. Of Ropanos is not as strong as he should have been there. And that's going to be half time. And uh, Hull growing into the game. Cholton gave possession away way too many times towards the back end of that first half. And we need to, to up our game and not think too much about that penalty loss. Uh, or that penalty miss, sorry, from Forster Kasky. The score currently 0-0, but I think we've got this in the bag if we can just turn it on a little bit more in the second half. Over to Diaz. This is the problem. Way too much space between me and any other player, but Grant has the ball now. He's going to give it to Diaz, who's going to cross it. Oh, maybe I should have gone for the shot there. Okay, so I've brought Suzuki on to replace Stengs, and I've changed to a 4-2-4 because I keep giving the ball away, and there are not enough players attacking for me at the moment when I'm getting on the counter-attack. Here come Hull, though. It's uh, dangerous. Bowen... To Dicko, Dicko turns, passes, Milinkovic, we get it away with Ropanos, and we are going to find lots of space here for Diego Lanes, and that's going to be Colin Grant, oh it's actually gone for the far post, it's a good uh, chance, and is it, is it the bar, how's that happened? Oh, I didn't know what happened to the ball there, but it basically bounced off the keeper I think, from the Diaz shot, and then hit the bar, and now here come Hull, hopefully we can make the tackle here shortly, no, it's released to the left winger of Hull. Milinkovic, and he's going to take it to the byline, and it comes. Hopefully, away it goes from Avropanos. Come on. Here we go. It's got to be a goal from Yuma Suzuki. That is awful. That is really bad. And now, Jake Forster Kasky, the penalty misser, has come off the pitch for Roli Bonavaccia. Not because he missed the penalty, but because he is worn out, and I feel like I need a more attacking minded player to come on the pitch as they also bring on Daniel Batty for Jackson Irvine. Here is Joe Aribo. Here's Colin Grant. And here is Yuma Suzuki, doesn't manage to get it on, t well he does manage to get it on target but not well enough, here's Diaz, Aribo, and it's Suzuki again, Suzuki with the shot and blocked, oh we've, we've nicked the ball, it's Yuma Suzuki to Colin Grant, Colin Grant, I'm not sure what to do with it, I'm so nervous, but can I get something on this, it's Bonavaccia, oh I think that's going to be full time once this ball goes away, and it is full time and I couldn't get the goal there. I'm really disappointed with my performance there. But we do take a point here at home to Hull who are rock bottom. That is a great point for them. And that penalty miss proved vital for us as we couldn't grab the goal. We had 11 shots, 55% possession to their two and one. That is not the best performance at home from Charlton. Uh, lots of sixes and seven, so slightly above average performance. Just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net and we live to fight another day. But we do take a point. Um, I can't remember who's around us now, but there's the there's the EFL Championship final scores. Let's have a look where that leaves us in the table at the moment. So it would have been a great opportunity to, to pull the gap back to eight points on Wolves because they also drew. We are still in second place. Brentford on equal points with us still. They've overtaken Stoke. And we have this game now against Sunderland where hopefully we can grab three points. Sunderland, by the way, are currently in ninth place. So they're having a pretty good season themselves and threatening the top six, but they're still not having as good a season as us overall. But off the back of that nil-nil home draw to Hull, I'm thinking that they might fancy themselves against us. So two players want to start this game. One is Tariq Fosu, who says I've been in good form lately. Obviously, he's been injured, but before he got injured, he was playing blisteringly well for us. And the other is Bang Wang, who wants me to put him in the squad. I don't think that's going to happen, Bang, uh, right now. But I think Tariq Fosu may be in with a shout here after we fail to put the ball in the back of the net. One guy, if anyone who knows where the back of the net is, is definitely Tariq Fosu. So what we're going to do is put Fosu... In fact, I wonder if Stengs can go right mid. Fosu can go left mid and Lanez can go in the middle. That could be a good shout. Or we could put Fosu there and Lanez on the left. I might try that. Yeah, I like that. So here we go. Second place, Cholton Athletic away in the final game of the episode to ninth placed Sunderland. A decent team, obviously. We had a bit of a rivalry with them uh, last season in League One, and we are about to hopefully go and grab three points at their place. Fair old, decent squad they've got there. They haven't made too many signings, actually, but um, still a decent team nonetheless. 30 minutes played, no goals as of yet. 
Let's get into this. Oh, and Dong puts them 1-0 up at the end of the first half. Deke still gets a red card. This is not going our way right now. Grant scores, which is good. But can we hold on to a point here at the Stadium of Light? Can we maybe even grab a goal? And it's going to be a 1-1 draw, not the end of the world um, at the Stadium of Light. So that is the end of this episode, guys. Make sure you leave a like on this one for me. Let's just finally have a look at where we are in the table. We are down there in third place, so Brentford have overtaken us. But make sure you join me in the next episode where we will be facing off against, let's see, Birmingham, Sheffield United and Wigan Athletic. A decent string of three fixtures there. So join me in the next one, guys. I'll catch you later. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well. And I'll catch you later. Sweet.